Hello everyone. So welcome to my channel. So now we are going to do the second question of our today's uh, contest. That is reachable nodes with the restriction. So here you can see that we are given with edges and restricted nodes in the question, right? So this is somehow a question of graph in which we would be required to make up a graph. And then there comes the graph questions. Then we all know. And in all the graph question, either we are required to do DFS or we are required to do BFS. So that's why this question is of DFS or BFS. That's all our choice that what we want to use. Now, let us see the question. If till now you are not able to understand that why it is a graph question or DFS or BFS, I'll let you know in the question. Okay. So here there is an undirected tree. So they are saying that there is undirected tree, right? So with n nodes labeled from 0 to n minus 1 and n minus 1 edges are there. Even if there is a tree, but we all know that tree is also a graph only. So that's why when it comes out to be an undirected tree, as it is not a cyclic, it is somehow acyclic only, right? So this tree is itself could be converted into a graph and that's how we would be doing this question. And how we are required to convert into a graph that I will uh, let you know that how we will convert and why we need to convert that also I'll let you know. So you are given a 2D integer array edges of length n minus 1 where edges of i means each edge consists of a i and b i basically first node and the second node and as we are given with edges array that simply means that there is one edge between a i and b i which indicates that there is an edge between node a i and b i yeah the thing which i was saying so you are also given with an integer array restricted which represent the restricted node so in the first example the restricted nodes are given here so these are just nodes not the edges so that's what they are given us here so we are required to return the maximum number of nodes you can reach from node 0 and including this node 0 also without this without visiting a restricted node. So that's the question we are required to. So just think, if we just do a DFS on this particular given array, right? Uh, like first thing is that how you would be doing DFS on just a array which is being given to us. Means a 2D array which is being given to us. See, if you even start from the zero and then just go into depth and then go to depth and then check at this time, here also you will be able to do or not and then you because of DFS backtracking you just go to parent node then you check that there is a restricted then you will be directly not going there then you will check for the next node right but again see if you would be doing like this right so it is already becoming a entry tree right it is not a binary tree even and in the next example here you can see that it is a and the tree with uh, four nodes which are being connected from zeroth node, right? So rather than going ahead with traversing an entry tree, so it's better to make it a graph question in which all the nodes are connected to each other, basically undirected graph, in which we are able to do either BFS or we are able to do DFS. So that's the thing which we will be doing here. So it becomes much easy to traverse the whole graph and then come up with our answer that what are the nodes which we can visit without even going ahead with the restricted nodes. So one thing is there that in this video I will show you about the DFS solution only because of the time constraint that I need to make video less than 15 minutes and even visibility is also till 15 minutes. So in the next video I will show you about the DFS. Right? So here I will show you about DFS only. So now Let's go ahead. So, uh, first thing for DFS, uh, for DFS, sorry. So, how we'll make up a graph. So, for that thing, you need to think about that what sort of data structure you would be using, right? And then you'll completely make a graph by uh, pushing to a particular node from the front and then checking for the other node and pushing towards the front of that node. If you are using a vector, then in that you will push back to that node means you will push uh, take two nodes and then you will directly push from one node to the other and that other node 
you will take the first note and push that first note towards the back of the other note this is how you will be making your undirected graph now comes the next part that now our graph is ready now how you need to do dss on the same for doing the dss for the same what you need to do is you need to maintain a visited node vector also and even for the restricted part the restricted node could be maintained by simply marking all the uh, because we would be maintain that visited a uh, vector also right so in that visited vector only at the position where we uh, encounter this restricted we we'll mark that as one or mark that as two that we have already visited that so and this moment it won't even able to go ahead with that restricted node and this is how we can easily avoid the restricted node and then we'll simply do our dss on this whole graph and this is the thing which we would be doing here so this was the only trick in this question that we how we are required to avoid the restricted node is directly by marking them with the visited node and whole dss is done with the visited node and then doing with the dss so one more thing why we were able to do so was because of this thing that they are labeled from 0 to n minus 1 and the nodes we are required to visit from 0 to n minus 1 only although there are n nodes but still the marking is from 0 to n minus 1 and the input would be a vector of vector n only right so because of that thing only the zero based index thing and even the element which is being present to there is also equal to the index itself so that's why we were easily able to do this so either you can pause this video or you can uh overhead with coding part then only i'll show you the uh, code and before that about the time complexity in the space complexity so as we are doing just dss here and we are just using extra space for storing these nodes only means basically making a graph so the time complexity is basically n plus e that is the number of nodes on the edges and the space complexity is number of nodes because we are making a graph and for that graph only we are using extra space and for that extra space is only the one for which our time compl- uh, space complexity is there so yeah just code it out and then i'll show you how to code it so that you could easily able to do your coding in your interviews also yeah uh so yeah fun more thing some interviewer just uh, requires that some of the students were asking me for a structured course which will provide them when and when mentorship live guidance live doubt sessions and so on so for that uh, thing i would recommend you about the newton school so about that whole detail you could find in the description of this video even the website link everything you will able to figure out about the newton school in the description and the best part which i figured out about the newton school is that you don't need to pay any upfront fee you just need to pay only after you get placed and they have the companies uh, tie up from 5 lpa to 40 lpa so when you get placed from any of these companies then only you need to pay for the course or the fee else you are not required to pay at the starting so this was all for mm, the same which i just got just recall so yeah now next slide about the coding so in the coding about the dss as i earlier told you that how we are required to do, go ahead is see this is that visited array Okay. and earlier we'll mark it as zero why we are marking it as zero because earlier everything would be false now when comes the part for the restricted nodes then only we'll mark all the restricted node as one that yeah it is listed and then this is for the purpose of making our graph we can make our graph either by using vector or vector int or even we could uh, make a graph like this also means vector and array both are taken together like this also we can make our a graph and then now this is the portion for making a graph we'll check for each node which is present in this edges vector or vector int means our input and then we'll take one node and push back the other node to the same and then we'll take 
that other node and push back the first node to the same. Why we are doing so? So that we can make a undirected graph. So this is how we will be making our graph, and then we'll call our DSS. So this is the thing we are doing for calling our DSS. Now we'll first at the first hand only check because a DSS is basically a recursive by heart, right? So in a recursion also we require a base case and then we require a recurrence relation, and there should be a statement which returns. at the point when we encounter a base case right so this is the base case when we encounter any visited node right then it will return zero because uh, when it is a restricted node then at that point we need to need to count that node and we just need to return zero so that's why we are returning zero and then comes the part where visited node equals to 1 that simply means that now we have already this is a part of the dss only that we have already visited that node so that's why Now this visited node equals to one, and now comes the part result. So this would be the storing. Uh, this would be the one variable which will be storing that final result. So now here we are doing DSS that will pick out each edge from my um, from my DSS list corresponding to that particular node, right? And then we'll check that if that edge is not visited, then only we'll further. move ahead with this particular process that will add up all the dss result to this result variable and then at the end this is the thing which we will be returning when we encounter a base case or even when we'll be backtracking at that moment also this is the thing which we will be returning so so that uh, this is at that position when we get a valid node and we are able to uh, able to return this to our answer means to our caller function and here we will be adding one which simply represent that we are adding one for that particular valid node and thus this is done so this was all for this particular dss solution if you have any doubt you could comment that down i hope you like this video please do like and subscribe to my channel thank you